you just provide a grant, you cannot really expect a financial return because you will not get the money back. Um, so what is going on now is that there's more and more uh, talk about blended value and blended returns and combining financial and social returns in your investment strategy. Um, so um, this sort of space in the middle is, is where social investment is going on. There's, it's also where venture philanthropy is happening. Venture philanthropy is actually including both grant making and social investment. So social investment is including sort of other financing instruments apart from pure grants uh, where you can also uh, expect a financial return. So for example, if you provide a loan, you can have an interest rate uh, on that loan and then you get your money back when the loan is repaid, but you also get sort of a, a, a small profit from the, the interest rate. Um, and obviously, if you invest in equity, you can also then sell that stake at the end of the investment. And if everything goes well, you can make a return. So there are lots of financing instruments that are appearing in that middle space. Um, and I guess that um, also there has been talk, some talk uh, during this conference about impact investing. And really the, the definition we look at when we look at impact investing is to um, making an investment that has a blended return, so it has a, a both a, a financial and a social return. And as an investor, you sort of have to decide whether the social or the financial return is your primary objective, because uh, there, there usually are trade-offs in, in that space. Um, so um, just to sort of think about who are the players, um, we have some banks here represented, um, and sort of the banks are now also developing lots of new um, uh, strategies where they also try to, to, to move in, in, in that middle space. Um, so several banks obviously have their own foundations uh, doing grant making, but they also have uh, advisory services uh, and their clients are saying that we actually want to do more than just provide grants. Uh, when we, uh, when we have a sort of a philanthropy strategy, so we also want to move into impact investing and venture philanthropy. So the banks are, are, are now increasingly starting to, to offer those services. Um, and I think that um, our speakers will talk more about what banks are doing. Um, this is perhaps not that visible, but it's really to to explain that there are lots of different types of financing instruments that are involving also depending on the needs of the social enterprise. So, for example, if I'm, a social, if I'm setting up a social enterprise, at the very beginning, uh, it's very difficult to, to get some sort of financing. And at this stage, it might be the best option to try to, to find a grant. Um, but once you have sort of evolved and uh, you have set up your, your organization and you're starting to, to generate some revenue, then it's, it's more likely that you can perhaps uh, uh, try to have so, um, some loans um, that you can then repay because you have revenues. So, so then it's really about tailoring the financing to the needs of the, of the social enterprise. Um, and just briefly the definition of venture philanthropy, because in a way uh, we've also seen that social enterprises, they need more than just financing. They also need some sort of support. So management support, that they need some, some help to actually grow and, and become a stronger organization. So venture philanthropy, it, it's something, it's a methodology that works to build stronger social organizations by providing them with a mix of both uh, financial and non-financial support. Um, and I will just briefly um, introduce the organization that I'm working for. It's, it's called European Venture Philanthropy Association. And it's really a, a network of, of social investors, uh, philanthropists that are sort of moving in that middle space that I've been talking about. Um, it now has a, around 140 members in 20 countries in Europe. And uh, the work we do is really to, um, to promote venture philanthropy, but also to help our members in their practices. So we do our own research, we, we organize workshops and conferences, and um, we think that it's really a network where our members can learn from each other as well. Um, I think my time is up, so I will um, 
introduce, well, I will move on to the speakers of the session. And uh, I think, I hope that this sort of help frame uh, what we will be talking about. Uh, so the first speaker is Ute. Um, it's very kind. We've actually decided, due to time reasons, that we flipped the order a bit around. So we let Olivier go first. Jason, could we? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, by the way, I'm very curious to know what is Europe's largest ethical bank. But, but you, you. <laughs> I'll hear it later. Um, you can maybe... Okay, thank you. Um, a quick word about Credos Bank for the ones who wouldn't uh, know the bank. It has been created 13 years ago in uh, the Netherlands and set up from the origin as a bank that was intended to, to finance solely um, uh, social projects, cultural projects, and environmental projects. And it was meant also to give to, to savers and investors uh, an instrument in order to um, invest in a responsible way and to know where their money uh, would be used for. At the same time, or during the same uh, time frame, Trios Bank developed uh, a series of... Uh, um, other investment products, uh, amongst which the, the green funds in the Netherlands that were meant to finance the, uh, the organic agriculture, uh, sustainable real estate funds, um, ethical uh, investment funds, and uh, microcredit funds, as well as um, renewable energy funds. Over the 30 years, um, Trios Bank uh, got um, subsidiaries in um, Belgium, UK, Spain, and uh, recently Germany. What is very specific to Trios Bank is that it never decided to open uh, its branches in these different countries, but it was always uh, due to, to local people who went to the Netherlands in order to ask to... Uh, open branches in their country. And so the, the, the strategies of Triodos in the different countries are relatively different, uh, even if the, the, the values of Triodos uh, are the same uh, across the different countries. Um, what's the aim of Triodos? To um, help to develop a society that promotes quality of life, to um, a certain uh, responsible use of uh, money, and to develop uh, innovative financial products in order to answer to the needs of the three sectors that I spoke about. Um, the three main um, characteristics of Triodos are sustainability. We have been built uh, and have been created 30 years ago in order to ensure uh, the development of sustainability. Transparency. And we are, I think, the only bank in the world that is uh, publishing all of the loans it grants on its website. Um, and that has a, a real dialogue with all of its clients, whereby all clients can come and discuss with the bank each year uh, about the strategy of the bank uh, in the past and the future. The third element is that we do finance only real economy and that we uh, have refused not three years ago, but 30 years ago, to ever enter into uh, all kind of uh, products that uh, today have shown their real uh, value to the banking sector. <laughs> um, people, planet, profit. Um, it's, it's relatively recent, but when Triodos was created, its name itself, Triodos, means in Greek, three ways, and the aim of the founding fathers of Triodos was indeed to foster these three uh, goals, people, planet, and profit. Now, uh, there is a big discussion going on today about uh, the, the banking sector and the concept of too big to fail, and in a lot of debates, I have discussions about whether or not uh, a world without big banks is possible. Our answer to that is, yes, indeed, 
not only is it possible, but it is necessary to um, avoid situations where big banks are too big to fail. Um, and we think that the a world of, big, of smaller banks is possible from the moment you create alliances and partnerships between the different banks in the world uh, that are united by identical goals. And therefore we created the Global Alliance for Banking on Values where we have an equal number of northern and southern banks, so microcredit banks essentially, uh, that work together to lobby for another kind of banking and to help themselves and exchange best practices. It has been created something like two years ago, but um, it has a constant uh, inflow of new members that are united by the fact that they strive for um, that that they strive for the same kind of uh, value-based banking. So go back to this. What is Freelance Bank today? Two billion loan portfolio financed by three billion uh, savings. So we are over liquid and we have a principle that we never want to go to the interbank financing in order to uh, finance our loan portfolio. 11 million net profit because we go for profit but we do not consider that profit is the goal of the bank, it is an instrument to measure the success and the, the soundness of the bank. And we have today about 300,000 clients um, in Europe. Um, we open about 3,000 new accounts per month in Spain, for instance. In Belgium, this figure is about uh, 800 uh, new clients per, per month but the, the bank is growing at a very fast pace. We have a, uh, an average growth of the balance sheet of 20% a year since inception. In Belgium, uh, we have a balance sheet total today of uh, 1 billion, um, about 800,000 funds interested. These are the figures of... Um, end of last year, and I did not revise them before uh, coming here, but today we have a loan portfolio of 560 million uh, euro in Belgium. And 48,000 clients. This is uh, a graph that shows you the, 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 the steep and, and rapid evolution of uh, the, the savings and the loan portfolio in Belgium. This gives you um, the, the, the split of the, the loan portfolio amongst culture, social and environmental sector. Now this is in volume and regarding the environment, of course, uh, environmental projects in general are uh, projects of a much bigger size than cultural or uh, social pr uh, projects. Um, a wind uh, farm in general amounts to 20 million uh, euro, while uh, a theater uh, financing will uh, be something like 500,000 or 1 million euro. Thank you. Um, I will go very quickly uh, to um, our experience regarding the financing of social uh, enterprises. And this is based on my experience uh, both as managing director of Triodos Bank Belgium, but also of the philanthropy fund of the Koning uh, Bauden Stichting uh, here in Belgium. We see that more and more social businesses are created uh, here in Belgium. Nevertheless, the market <coughs> is underdeveloped because of um, the non profit model that is mostly applied to these uh, organizations. And that is very shy of making any kind of product of profit, whereas we think that as much as possible, social businesses should, should strive to a reasonable amount of profit in order to uh, help part of their own financing and in order to um, <coughs> show the sanity of their proposition to the to the society. Um, we also see, and that is 
extremely important. 